Welcome back to Echo Ridge and another episode here in our Chaos Crew Play Along. Today we have six colonies, all from the exact same seed, and the first one is by community member Yulson. You Yulson? I'm gonna go with Yulson. And their colony, the Lunar Space Camp. And as you can already tell, Yulson believes in chaos. I do believe they have to have at least one degree in it. We're gonna start off by this beautiful space-bound petroleum boiler and it's all being fed by three oil wells here at the bottom of their home planetoid. You can also tell in the interest of saving frames per second, they filled in the entire bottom half of the map with plastic tiles. We have a wonderful little cuddle pip ranch here that for some reason has a water sieve and it's sitting right next to a bathroom and it's right below a bristle blossom farm. And this is what I'm talking about. The entire colony is like a smorgasbord of, okay, this is good it's like organized chaos right here's a nice little draco farm and oh my goodness i need that painting in my life the iconic iteration now a couple of notes if you're new to the chaos crew play along you're gonna see some messes and stuff throughout the colonies that we see you'll also always see sandbox mode enabled it doesn't mean this is how the colony looked before they sent it it merely means that my wonderful mods put it in sandbox mode in order to be able to prepare it for me to be able to view it. Because everybody plays the game a little bit differently. For instance, I never knew you could stack this many steam turbines together like this. I don't know if it's a glitch, a mod, or what, but at least it looks pretty cool. And it's taking all those steam turbines to cool off all this diamond that is continuously picking up heat from the thermal aqua tuner and all these petroleum generators. And I say that because all these petroleum generators are sitting at 900 degrees. And it works because they're all made out of thermium. And all the carbon dioxide is also sitting at 900 degrees, which is touching all of these diamond window tiles and metal gold tiles, injecting more heat in here. They're using diamond on the conveyor rails because, well, diamond's such a good conductor. And then running by the graphics, I'm guessing 20 steam turbines? But being the chaos expert, I need to show you one other thing that you're going to see as a frequent occurrence in this playthrough. And that is the steady stream of rad bolts flying across the sky. How might you ask? Well, if we go over here to Medito, you can see they're also flying through here. Medito also has a bunch of stacked solar panels being fed by some ceiling lights here. And I suppose the light coming out of from the sky as well. Over on Magmilla, you can see that the rad bolts are going in a different location, not quite towards the top of the map. But if I were to turn this switch on, you could see all those rad bolts just slowly crushing away at all of the subsidian. This is what we call a rad bolt drill. And apparently it's the first time Yulson has ever built one. On this planetoid, you'll also find the Niobium volcano, where they are eventually able to get access to thermium. And oh yeah, there's like four tons of liquid niobium in every tile. Over on Blizzial, we can see that the temporal tear opener has been activated and all the wonderful iron volcanoes have been tamed. This whole area has been vacuumed out. So once again, there's a bunch of liquid iron sitting everywhere with a conveniently placed pitcher pump as well. But the real story is over here on Hydrola. This is also the first time that Yulson has completed a research reactor and once again has put it into a nice little tight location. The piping on it is quite curious. The whole thing's being cooled by these two thermo aqua tuners, which those are being cooled by, you know, several more steam turbines all conveniently stacked on each other. And you might be thinking these steam turbines and thermo aqua tuners are keeping that cool as well, except, well, they're not. They're responsible for keeping the rad bolt drill cool. Yes, this monster is responsible for keeping all those rad bolts flying throughout the star map. For those of you wondering how it works, well, the maps, the way they're separated, this right here is just another colony. You just can't see it. In fact, I'd be willing to bet if you added up all the spaced out maps, the sizes wouldn't be much different than one of those large classic asteroids that we were used to. They're just all touching this way and dupes can't get across that way. And you can sort of see where each colony would be sitting. Now this one took me a little while to understand and I'm not 100% sure I've seen all the caveats. But one thing's kind of cool, I've never seen rad bolts crashing into each other. 
and you can see that they sort of explode. But I think the magic starts somewhere down here. You can see that there's quite a bit of nuclear waste, and by quite a bit, I mean 465,000 kilos. And it's firing rad bolts, approximately 7,679 per cycle, into this rad bolt chamber. Well, because of the way the radiation works, there's little drops of water picking up on all this radioactive contaminant. Well, when you take that radioactive contaminant and spread it out through little blobs of water, and then you feed all the water into these liquid vents, which drops down into these containers, those contaminants never really have a way to dissipate. And considering the contaminants are not tied to the mass of the water, you're sort of able to duplicate the amount of radiation that you have. And for that nonsense, you can see that this one tile is producing 87,000 rad bolts per cycle. Needless to say, a dupe can't get anywhere near it. I've never seen a system quite like this, so my hat's off to Yulson for its wonderful construction. I'm curious to how long out of the 2740 cycles and 210 hours they were playing this map that this took. Because this whole system is nothing to shake a stick at. So thanks again to Yulson for submitting their colony and a job well done. I love your brand of chaos and keep up the great work. This next colony was cheekily submitted by Angry Forest and is called All Work and No Pay. And you can see that they're already rubbing it in my face that I have yet to get a payphone. Well done, Angry. But because Angry decided to rub my nose in it, we will not be looking at their colony. This next colony was submitted by... I'm just kidding. First thing I noticed when I loaded up this colony, beside all the wonderful payphones, is the wonderful use of wallpaper. I love all the different designs. This is just something that I have not practiced enough with, but just the fact that you can build these ovals, this little weird shape here, a little mountain range almost, and even little hearts. It gives the whole colony a really nice aesthetic. Now because this colony is called All Work and No Pay, you can see that every single dupe is named after Pay. Some of my favorites are Max Payne and Pay Valdo, but there is no pay on the colony. Angry has put 650 cycles and almost 100 hours into this playthrough, and it's actually the first time Angry's made it past cycle 500 and had more than 10 dupes. One of the particular achievements I think Angry accomplished that I think most of you will be interested in is their entire base is being cooled using ethanol and these two thermo aqua tuners made out of copper. And yet, there's not a single steam turbine on the colony. Not only is this keeping the base cool, it's also taming this hydrogen vent as well. Hydrogen comes through in here, gets chilled down by the polluted water in the cooling loop, and then the gas pumps siphon it out, where a bunch of hydrogen generators have plenty of hydrogen to be able to power whatever they need. Now, if you're wondering how this cooling system works, it has to do with the flash point of liquid ethanol versus its gas, which happens at 78.4 degrees. So the liquid ethanol heats up, turns into a gas, which then floats all the way up. Once it hits these nice cool plates that are being kept cool from the thermo aqua tuners and the radiant liquid pipes, it then flashes back into a liquid and drips all the way back down, keeping the copper or thermo aqua tuners cold. And we have an identical chamber over here doing the same thing, using the same radiant liquid pipes to be able to help tame the hydrogen vent. This is once again a project I've never done and I enjoyed looking at it. I still have a few questions about the colony and once again, who knows how it actually happened, but look at this giant tower of snow here. That couldn't have been just one meteor. Of course, this planetoid does see ice meteor showers, so maybe this is just how they've trimmed it out? I don't know, but it definitely looks kind of cool, huh? Now, whether or not this was intentional, we'll never know, but this little dinky rocket is named Echo X. I don't know why they felt it necessary to make me the smallest rocket known to man. It is being supplied with oxygen though, so maybe it's not the size of the rocket that counts? We have another power brick over here in the right side of the colony and all of it's being chilled, once again, by an ethanol and copper ore cooling system. It's also where the spawn is that is being built on top of this Earl Grey geyser that is erupting with very cold carbon dioxide. What an ingenious way to keep all of your oxygen cool. The connected planetoid of Aquiol has a couple of nice features as well, but also is adorned with a lot of nice wallpaper designs and some wonderful staycation cots. 
I think this is my first time ever seeing a staycation cot. But notice how they put the wallpaper behind it so it sort of matches the cot. I'd be willing to bet that Angry Forest definitely has some art skills. They're also utilizing a door crusher to get rid of carbon dioxide. Always like to see these little systems, as I don't think they're used often enough, and they can be quite handy. And then I wanted to highlight a rather interesting looking spawn that for some reason is crushing oxygen. I suppose they have to do that because they're only using two gas pumps and they have two electrolyzers. Normally you'd need at least two gas pumps per electrolyzer. So possibly in order to keep the whole thing in equilibrium, they just crush the excess oxygen instead of pumping it to nowhere. So well done on the achievements, and I appreciate you submitting a beautiful colony, Angry. This next colony was submitted by Kansas City Shuffle and is called I Got Big Rocks. Kansas City Shuffle played this one for 740 cycles over the course of about 80 hours. And the first thing I want to highlight is this wonderful Draco Ranch design. Notice that we have two separate chambers, one for the glossy Dracos and one for the standard Dracos. The standard Dracos are eating bomb lilies that are surrounded by chlorine, and the mix is enough to where the bomb lilies will keep growing, and the Dracos are often sitting in a hydrogen atmosphere to make sure they can be sheared as often as possible. Down here for the glossy Dracos, they're eating mealwood that are sitting in carbon dioxide, with once again the split being perfect, so the glossies are often sitting in the hydrogen. And then they're also utilizing a starvation and shearing area that is also sitting in hydrogen. And for that work, even though it's only cycle 740, they have over 2,500 units of reed fiber and 380 tons of plastic. Kansas City Shuffle is utilizing some petroleum generators that is being fed by petroleum coming from a bunch of molten slicksters. Yeah, the ranch only has eight, but the incubation area has 87. And the carbon dioxide that the Moltons are eating are coming from a couple of locations. First from some natural gas generators, but then also from gas pumps taking all of the carbon dioxide being produced by the petroleum generators. I love circular systems like this. It really works out well. And Kansas City Shuffle is able to get both power, barbecue, petroleum, and polluted water for their efforts. They also have another source of petroleum, and that's coming from these three oil wells. This is the style of oil well taming that I've sort of grown accustomed to. I don't put these two insulated tiles, but I just let all the oil sort of drain off into a giant pool, vacuum the whole area out so it's nothing but natural gas, and then they're using a pair of oil refineries to create even more petroleum. What's even great is they've managed to tie this in with a leaky oil fissure. So they're actually generating more than 10 kilos per second of oil. So if they wanted to go even larger with the petroleum generators, they could. All the duplicates are sleeping in stargazer cots, and their naming style on this planetoid is all based on what they do. Ranch and Ranch 2 obviously do the ranching, and then Smarty Pants apparently is doing research. My favorite might be Mech Pilot, though. I wouldn't expect them to do mechatronics engineering. Maybe they also can pilot a rover. We also have a couple of hatch ranches, although it looks like they're still standing them up. And for that effort, combined with the Slicksters, they have almost 2 million calories worth of barbecue. We have a nice bee farm on the second colony, along with the sleet wheat and the bristle blossom that's being grown for all that wonderful berry sludge. Funny enough, the secondary colony actually has more calories than the first. And all that food is being cooked in a nice little kitchen setup. We have the electric grill, a gas range, and the spice grinder not to mention the micro musher for the berry sludge, the wonderful deep freezer that's being kept cold from, once again, ethanol, and a cooling system I had not really seen before. All of this ice is sitting in front of a cooling loop that's being chilled by this thermo aqua tuner. The chill of the ice is then injected into these little pools of petroleum where they can have a bunch of different cooling loops. One of them is the cooling loop for the colony, one of them is the cooling loop for the deep freezer, and then the last one is keeping the sleet wheat cold. Over on Blagani, which is a little deeper into the star map, we have a couple of dupes here that have been successful in setting up a three-way volcano tamer. We have cobalt, gold, and copper, and all those metals are being drained from their heat inside the sauna, where they then get passed off into a debris chiller, and then dropped down here, where you can see there's quite a bit saved up. 
It looks like Kansas City Shuffle was also in the process of building some nice bunker doors to be able to protect the solar panels. And the rocket that's sitting on this planetoid had a very interesting design that I wanted to show off. Notice it's got three ladder beds, giving them the barracks morale. It also has a washroom to be able to give them plus two to morale. Not much room for anything else considering there's three Atmo suit docks and all of that oxygen is being provided by algae. Oh, the mech pilot has to eat on the floor in the washroom. Sorry, buddy. No room for mess tables in this one. Back on the main planetoid, these three are outfitted with a bunch of large cargo bays and drill cones. And for only 80 hours, they've managed to make their way around the star map pretty well. So once again, a tip of the hat to Kansas City Shuffle, and thank you for submitting the colony for all of us to be able to look at. This colony threw me for a surprise. It is Chaos Crew submitted by, I think it's Zook? And as you can already see, it is gorgeous to look at. I've always loved colonies that use these sort of interconnected rooms and make use of every little tile. Around every corner and through every door is just an interesting surprise waiting to be seen. <gasps> they also have dreamboat beds. Everybody has a nice little condominium here and they're all sporting the dreamboat bed. They have their own bathrooms and showers and they're all utilizing hand sanitizers. That's pretty cool. Where are you getting your source of bleach stone? And it looks like the entire colony is running off of duplicate power, but it's being used with a power control station. So that means every single manual generator is 600 watts. I did an entire playthrough using the manual generators and dupe power and really enjoyed it because it's doing it a little bit different. I love taking a look at this great hall. It has a pair of telephones and a bunch of beautifully placed mess tables. Something else interesting that you're probably going to appreciate here on this colony is, well, the use of rooms. Look at this room overlay and how many wonderful nature reserves are all around the colony. Zook appreciates the nature reserves and takes every opportunity to maintain and care for them, often leaving large chunks of the planetoid untouched for it. And you can sort of tell too because everybody in the colony is sitting with 30, 40, and even 50 morale. By the way, the naming scheme that Duke chose to use was members of our own community. Nice touch, Zook. I appreciate it. Zook decided to maintain access to the oil, but they have all the oil wells disabled. But you can tell once they ever need some oil, well, they just drop some out and then mop it up. Everything on this colony is just gorgeous to look at. Here's a crude oil tank. Here's a polluted water tank, and here's a water tank. And they're all adorned with wallpaper and just a nice looking stylized area. I really need to get myself a dream boat. I think I want one of these in real life. I mean, even the spaceport is adorned with cloud prints everywhere. Over on the secondary planetoid, I don't know what Calero did wrong. But they're here with Pav and, you know, no cots but they do have 13,000 calories worth of nutrient bars. I'm sure what happened here, after all, Zook only played this map for 56 hours and 477 cycles, is that they had planned to start working over here, just ran out of time. I do stand corrected though, there is some power being ran by hydrogen. It is not just duplicate power, but it does give me a good opportunity to highlight the power spine that is wrapped all around the colony. So anywhere they need power, they're going to be able to get it. In addition to the party line phones that we showed earlier, the duplicates also have access to a jukebox and an arcade cabinet. And it looks like they really didn't need a deep freezer because they're taking all the omelets, pickled meal, barbecue, and putting in the spice grinder. Oh my goodness, there's another recreation room. And of course, it's adorned by the one and the only, the payphone. Dear Clay, can I please have a payphone? Thank you. Hats off to Zook for submitting this beautiful colony. You know, they say one of the keys to life is not comparing your situation with others. But here on the Recursive Sound 52, Xenosai is really making me envious. Not only do they have the little rocket ship, they have the dream boat and the bouncy castle. I love how on the SS Napmaster bed you can see one of those hangy things that I can't remember the name of right now. A pro level YouTube would have just looked up the name of the hangy thing and then told it to you, but all you're getting today is hangy thing. Xenosai is firmly into the late game at cycle 2021 and they've spent 240 hours here. 
The first thing I wanted to showcase on Xenosai is their wonderful oil collection area. Once again, they're using the just let the oil well go off in an open area so that you can collect the natural gas for use later. All that natural gas heads off both to the kitchen for use in the gas range and then is being sent over to the second planetoid. But what's more impressive about this setup and a system that I have not even seen before is the petroleum boiler from the leaky oil fissure. All of this petroleum is sitting at 400 degrees. Well, there's a thermo sensor that says, hey, if it ever gets below 400 degrees, turn this thermo aqua tuner made of thermium on. It's gonna dump its chill into a liquid depotizer path filled with super coolant and generate all the heat that's needed to be able to keep petroleum being generated from the leaky oil fissure. When it gets high enough, it gets pumped out by this liquid pump, also made of thermium. We also have a cool steam vent over on the left side of the map that is being tamed by a thermo aqua tuner. In fact, all this water in here is sitting at around 17 and a half degrees. The steam does not stand a chance as soon as it erupts from the cool steam vent. The temperature shift plates grab all that heat and it condenses right into water. That water is then being used to keep the entire base set at a constant temperature. You know, where the duplicants can be happy in their nice little collection of beds. I'm not bitter. We also have one of the most interesting oxygen machines I've ever seen, and it's utilizing gas valves and a pair of gas pumps. And while it's very difficult to see, it does not matter what the gas pumps take out, the valves are controlling the flow and keeping, for instance, hydrogen looping on this side and oxygen looping on this side. We also have a nice pip branch here and a collection of geotuners and a similar Draco setup that we saw before, with one side being regular Dracos and the other being glossies. Pretty neat colony though, huh? Except you may have noticed that there's only three duplicates on this planetoid. Yeah, this isn't the meat and potatoes. The secondary colony is the meat and potatoes and it has 18 duplicates. We have a lot of bristle blossoms, a lot of sleet wheat, and we've created 23 million calories to include 12 million calories worth of berry sludge. This colony also has a standard petroleum boiler because I guess they needed more petroleum and a beautiful geothermal spike that whenever it's needed can inject heat into the industrial sauna. And oh my word, that is a lot of super coolant. That must have taken many trips to go get that fullerene. We have a wonderful steam vent tamer here. Pretty standard, but a beautiful design nonetheless. We have one steam turbine for the thermo aqua tuner and then three steam turbines taking care of everything else. The water comes through. And because of this thermo aqua tuner is pretty chill and is instantly gobbled up by this liquid pump. A nice eclectic selection of artifacts next to even more bed types. Yes, they also have the stargazer cot. A nice little recreation room adorned with some pixel packs. They also have, you know, quite a few rockets at their disposal. The most interesting one is probably the Brave Knowledge here, where they managed to fit an entire enclosed telescope inside of it. And when you have a telescope that large inside of a rocket, considering its greater range than the standard telescope, I'm sure it did not take Xenosci very long to explore the entire star map. By the way, this telescope is in the Great Hall in case you were wondering if it was possible. In fact, this rocket interior has a washroom, a barracks, and a great hall. Well done on this rocket design. Some of the other rockets to include Rocket XC, Adaptable Neptune, and Interstellar Knowledge are all pretty much outfitted identically. And these three dupe rockets are outfitted with a barracks, a mess hall, and a washroom once again. I really need to work on my rocket design interiors. I appreciate you giving me a few extra ideas, you know, Sai. And those rockets have been used to explore quite a few planetoids in the star map. This one here, while not having any duplicates right now, has a nice little atmosphere and could easily support a few duplicates. You can see work was done here on Eugelin, possibly with future plans to tame these volcanoes. The water planet too was conquered as was Lethola, and even the Gassy Moo planet. Looks like they managed to tame themselves a Gassy Moo. The Niobium Tamer is working just fine over here on Tostini, where we're utilizing super coolant, where Niobium is then transferred in and around the system, and while it still comes out pretty hot, 
It's only at 94 degrees. By the way, as impressive as this playthrough is, this is Xenotai's first time into the endgame and their first time building a petroleum boiler. And they did all that while accomplishing Home Sweet Home and just about every single achievement. The only three they have left is Mind the Gap, GMO AOK, -OK, and That's Rad. So thanks again to Xenosai for showing off their playthrough and proving the fact that if you don't like your home colony, well, just move next door. Our next colony was submitted by Crypto Raider Gaming and is titled The Chaos Crew 2 Electric Boogaloo. I think you pronounce that Boogaloo? I have no idea. We start this one with a beautiful nuclear reactor setup and note it's being taken care of by 10 steam turbines. Although I am a little nervous because there are some broken insulated tiles and stuff in here, but luckily it doesn't look like they're using them. And opposed to actually collecting the radiation off the reactor, Crypto has opted to suction out all of the nuclear waste and put it in a bit of infinite storage, where each of these tiles is generating about 8,000 rad bolts per cycle. All the duplicates on this planetoid are living in nice little dreamboat bed, private bedrooms, all adorned with a couple of statues and a painting, which of course I noticed that Crypto has La Belle Meep. One of the things I love about the Chaos Crew play along is seeing all the different blueprints that people have. I'm also thankful that Clay allows us to see them even though they're being loaded up by someone who does not have them. For instance, if I try to copy this dreamboat bed, it's gonna default right to the comfy bed. Oh yeah, that's because I only own the Grand Prix bed because Clay hates me. They also have the staycation and the lab cot. I did recently get the lab cot, so I suppose I should be thankful and say thank you to Clay. But so help me if I find a payphone on this colony. It looks like Crypto was in the process of putting in a new power spine complete with power control stations and utilizing some hydrogen. They played this colony for 724 cycles over the course of 132 hours. Crypto said, hold my beer, I'm just gonna dump all the oil right down here and fill up the entire bottom of the colony. In fact, we're running one, two, three, four oil wells. And that's not including the oil well up here as well. The natural gas is just being separated by the fact that it's heavier than the oxygen that's in the atmosphere. So anytime they want, they can grab a gas pump and run some natural gas generators for quite some time. A half Rodriguez is providing the oxygen for the colony. And I just noticed that some of that nuclear waste was also coming over to this corner where it is supplying rad bolts for another rocket and an interplanetary launcher. Speaking of rockets, Neferon's Disappointment is also adorned with the Great Hall, the Barracks, and the Washroom. And it looks like this was the Orbital Data Collection Lab Rocket. I like this rocket design though because it just highlights how differently everybody plays the game. I have never seen anything quite like this. I mean, we even have a star map location center in here that is apparently sending green signals out to Pastorona, Moistolin, and Yakino. Which I just realized, even though everybody's playing on the same seed, the names of the planetoids have been different. Good to know. One of the highlights I wanted to show out in the star map was over here on Dampedo. Not only did Crypto land here and set up a mini pod, this is actually the first time Crypto has landed on another planetoid by just using a dupe, and they built a ladder that goes, well, all the way down here. And at the bottom is this nice little area here that's all been cleaned out. It's full of oxygen and sort of ready to move in. Yeah, they'd have some work to do, but they got a nice lobby chair to sit in. And I've seen a couple of these, during the Chaos Crew play-alongs, but to highlight Crypto's lander rocket, you can see that they figured out how to, you know, melt the rocket walls to be able to gain access to this entire area. I mean, there's even lab suit docks in this rocket now. At this point, is this considered a rocket? Maybe this should be considered a space station instead. It looks like this was the exit point they found, and we can probably credit the great Francis John for highlighting the possibilities with the rocket interiors. This is still something I have not yet done, but I definitely want to in a future playthrough. But another reason why I wanted to highlight Crypto's efforts at this, because not only did they do it here at the lander, they also did it here at the Wandering Calypso 4. Crypto does have duplicates living on the connected planetoid, where it looks like they have access to all this beautiful enriched uranium being provided by the bees. 
where it's all being sent back to the main planetoid using the supply teleporter input. That looks like the entire purpose of this colony is just to make sure that enriched uranium keeps on flowing. Oh wow, I didn't realize this secondary colony until now had a full-fledged water geyser. That water is also being sent back to the main planetoid. But that water is actually coming out at 95C, so I wonder what they're doing with it at the other end. It's coming out on the other side, still at about 78, being filtered up and around, all in insulated tiles at least, where it goes through a filtration system, and then eventually makes its way to an infinite storage, where you know we have just a little bit of water saved up. And all this is capped off, of course, by a pair of beautiful monuments. As an aside, this is actually the first colony that Crypto completed an industrial sauna, had a space program, first time they played past cycle 500, their first time getting super coolant, and building these monuments. So thanks again to Crypto for sharing the colony where they were able to complete a whole lot of their personal firsts. Tip of the hat, and well done. While I can't showcase every colony that is submitted, what you're looking at now is a montage of just some of the people who've played in the Chaos Crew play along. Every couple months or so, we roll a new seed and everybody chit chats about their playthrough in the Discord channel. It's definitely not meant as a competition and it's intended to be more of a way to play Ani multiplayer. So if you're interested in playing in the next Chaos Crew play along, I invite you to join the Discord and head on over to the Chaos Crew play along channel. We have an amazing community of wonderful people where I'm sure you'd be able to make yourself right at home. And it just so happens that this video is sort of the culminating event for the end of the current Chaos Crew play along. So now's the perfect opportunity that if you wanted to start fresh with the community and join in on the next seed, you can. We'll be rolling the next seed during my live stream on August 6th. So once again, jump in the Discord, pull up a comfy chair, and get ready for another wonderful Chaos Crew play along. Thank you once again to all the submitters, whether they submitted a video, or just a screenshot of their colony. I appreciate it and thank you for making the Chaos Crew what it is. And then of course a special thanks to the moderators, specifically Calero and Gabby, for always taking the lead with the community and this series. And if you happen to see them in the Discord, maybe give them a wave and a thumbs up. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider giving it a like. That way YouTube will share it to more people just like you. Until next time, much love, happy gaming, and I'll talk to you soon.